And question 10. In this equation, P can take two integral values to give the equations of two tangents to the circle. Well, you can see what's happening here. If I just, well, what was the first part, sorry. Find both values of P. Well, this circle, I know what its centre is. The centre is at 1, 2. And if I want its radius, its radius is going to be root 5. Because I've got the square root of 1 square and 2 square take away nothing, root 5. So if I was to put a quick diagram down for this circle, centres 1 along 2 up, but the radius is bigger than that. So I've got some centre circle centred there at 1, 2. And this line here, that's y equals negative 2x plus p has to be a tangent. Well, that means the line's got a gradient of negative 2, but it could cut the y-axis anywhere, and that's what you've defined. Where would it cut the y-axis so it'd be a tangent? So there could be one like this, and there could be one much higher up than that. There's going to be two points here. That's the values of p and q you're looking for. You can do it without a diagram. So what we're going to have to do then is say, well, if this line is a tangent to that circle, Find the points of intersection so there's only one point of intersection. I'll call that 1, and I'll call that 2. So I'm looking for intersections. Right. Intersection. This is part A. For the intersection, I'm going to substitute, I've called it 1, sorry, 1 in 2. So writing out equation 1, I've got x squared plus y squared is going to be this then, negative 2x plus p minus 2x minus 4y, well that's going to be minus 2x plus p, and that should just equal 0. So spelling this out, x squared plus square the first, 4x squared, twice the product, negative 2p doubled, negative 4px, square the last, p squared, minus the 2x, plus 8x minus 4p should equal 0. So this is the equation for the intersections. 5x squared then I've got 6x minus 4px, I'm just doing two bits, I've got 6x and a minus 4px, and then a plus p squared and a minus 4p equals 0, but I could have tidied that up straight away if I left it to this line, just so it would be clearer. Take the x out, and I've got 6 minus 4p, lots of x. Maybe I'll just put brackets around those two to highlight them. Plus p squared minus 4p equals 0. Now, that's the equation for the intersections. So I'm going to say I'll have a tangent if the discriminant b squared minus 4ac equals 0. If b being the coefficient of x, which is the 6 minus 4p, minus 4 times a being the coefficient of x squared, which is 5, times c being the constant on its own at the end, so that's this expression, p squared minus 4p. If that equals 0, when that equals 0, it'll be a tangent. So I'm going to solve this internal quadratic equation. So let's just multiply that out. So I've got 36 minus 24 doubled minus 48p plus 16p squared minus that's 20p squared, but that'll be plus 420s are 80p equals 0. Bring that across, that's minus 4p squared. 80 take away that, so that's plus 32p plus 36 equals 0. Divide everything by negative 4, it's not in an equation, so I can do that quite safely. Plus 8, whoops, divided by negative 4, minus 8p minus 9 equals 0. Factorise that, you can see that's going to factorise p times p 1 times 9 must be negative 9 and plus 1. So here, finally, the values of p are p equals negative 1 or p equals 9. Which, in terms of the diagram, means it either cuts at negative 1 or it cuts way up here at 9. Now, part b says, state the equation of the tangents and find their points of contact. Well, the tangents were y equals negative 2x minus 1 and y equals negative 2x plus 9. There's the two equations of the tangents. Now for the points of contact, I'll have to substitute them back into that equation. This equation here. But I've already done that. I had that in that earlier part, so I'll put it back down here. That's the equation I had earlier. That was the equation for the intersections. Intersections. So it's just a case of Putting that one in, well, that means when p was negative 1, so I'll put it just here, p 
p equals negative 1 for the lower one. So what do you get if p is negative 1? You'll have 5x squared. That will be 6 plus 4 is plus 10x. And that will be 5 equals 0. So x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So that factorises just to x plus 1 squared, as it always does. Factorises to a square if it's a tangent. Which means straight away, x equals negative 1. In which case, y is equal to negative 2 times negative 1 minus the 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is positive 1. So one of the points, I don't know which one's which, it doesn't make it clear, so we'll just call that an A, is the point negative 1, 1. The other line, in the other line, P was equal to 9. So putting that into that equation would give me 5x squared plus and that'll be 6, oops, so I'll be subtract then, it'll be 6 minus 36, so that's minus 30x, plus, and that'll be 9 nines, so that'll be 5, and that'll be 45, equals 0, dividing by 5, x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0, which, since it's a tangent, factorises, of course, to a square, x minus 3, x minus 3, equals 0, in which case, x is equal to 3, in which case, y is going to be negative 2 times 3 plus the 9, so that's going to be negative 6 and 9 is 3, so y is equal to 3. There we go. So b is the point 3, 3. Part C says what's the equation of the diameter AB, and it will be a diameter, because if those lines are tangents, then the lines through them should pass through the centre. So there's two ways you can get the equation of that diameter. You can either use the point you already know, 1, 2, the centre was at 1, 2, and the fact it must be perpendicular to the lines. Those lines were equations y equals negative 2x, so I could get it straightforward from this. The centre of the circle was 1, 2. The equation of it, the gradient of the radius, if you like, the gradient of AB must be perpendicular to that, which is a half, and then just feed it in. y minus 2 is a half of x minus 1, doubling all. 2y minus 4 is x minus 1, then any way you like. 2y equals x plus 3. You could either do it that way, or you could ignore all that and just take it directly from the points A and B, which should just give you the same result, but that would be the quicker way of doing it. The diameter must pass through the centre, so you know the centre already, and it must be perpendicular to the lines. We can always put that down there. The gradient of the line was negative 2, which means the gradient of AB must be the negative of the reciprocal half. Well, you could just do it quickly here. What have you got? You've got the points AB. So if you want AB, then you would have... The gradient of AB would be the difference in Y over the difference in X. But you know it's perpendicular. So it's going to be 3 take away the 1 over 3 take away the negative 1. So that's going to be 2 over 4, which is a half, which is no surprise. So that's the same so far. Pick any particular point on it. Just take the point 3, 3. Y minus 3 is a half of X minus 3. So doubling it all, 2Y minus 6 equals X minus 3. So 2y equals x plus 3. Same equation. Because I really wasn't necessary that part of it.